Well, as my amazing host just said, my name is Mia Zachary. I am a best-selling novelist. I'm a creative vision developer, and what I do is I help other people tell their stories. Now, it might be a story that they made up, like I do some fiction coaching, or it might be the story of a business that they started. But most importantly, I help people tell the stories of their personal experience. And today, for the very first time in public, you're going to hear mine. This presentation is called Hashtag Still Here. And the reason for that is because I am. I am still here. And I am so grateful to be able to share this message with you. There are millions of people all around the world who are battling depression every day. And those same millions don't usually talk about it. So I'm standing here today to start a conversation and to celebrate survival. So who is this for? It's for you. And it's for anyone that you care about and anyone that you want to help. You know, the thing about depression is it, um, it really affects your sleep. If you're not tossing and turning all night with anxiety attacks, then you just want to curl up in your bed and stay there forever and escape from reality, basically. And I know this from personal experience because that's what I wanted to do. So this presentation is for everybody who opened their eyes. The other thing about depression is it's, it, it's like a weight and it just gets heavier and heavier and it weighs on you and it just puts this pressure on your chest. So this presentation is for everybody who took another breath and then another one after that and then another one after that. We want to hide our depression a lot of the times. We want to avoid people. We don't want to be around. And it's not personal. It's not you. It's us. It's easier a lot of times for me to just not answer the phone and say no to invitations because the harder part is to explain to you what I'm going through. And if I can't do that, then I'm not going to go to wherever it is that you've invited me to. I might not even leave the house for a couple hours, days, weeks. And yeah, I've done that. So this presentation is for everybody who opened the curtains and let in the light and turned your face up to the sun. Now, the other thing about depression is it steals your energy. I can't even tell you how many days I lost time, just lost time that I'm never going to get back because it robs you of motivation. Um, you know, it used to take me 20, 30, 40, 60 minutes sometimes to get up and get dressed for work because I just couldn't get out of bed. Or I'd find myself, you know, standing in front of the closet and just staring, and the next thing I know, a half hour's gone. So this presentation is for everybody who got up off the couch. Yay you. <laughs> Depression makes you feel small. It uh, feeds on your insecurities, and it, and it makes you stop dreaming. I know for me, I stopped dreaming at all. And for a creative person, for someone who's been writing my whole life, that's detrimental in ways I can't even explain to you. But the thing of it is, you see, that I didn't believe I was going to be here long enough for any of those dreams to come true. So this presentation is for everybody who stopped playing small and took a step forward. Something that you need to understand about us is that there is no cure for depression. There's only control. I'm going to share with you in a couple minutes some things that you can do to control it, but trust me when I say I have been on every antidepressant from Celexa to Zoloft. I've done individual therapy, talk therapy, art therapy, group therapy, you name it, I've done it. And you're still going to struggle sometimes. I still have bad days, but they're not as bad as they were before. And they are days now, not weeks or months. So this presentation is for everybody who got up, tried again, and kept going. The World Health Organization has given statistics of 800,000, 800,000 people took their own lives in 2013. 
Here in the U.S., the Center for Disease Control says that suicide is now the number two leading cause of death among young people aged 10, aged 10 to 24. So this presentation is for everybody who has found a new hope, who's found the courage to cross over that bridge and keep going. So if you can relate to this, if this sounds familiar, if you have been here and done that, holler if you hear me, go to facebook.com, find the Live Your Best Life movement group, and put hashtag I'm here, hashtag I'm here, and tag me in it, at M-I-A-Z-A-C-H-A-R-Y. I promise I will answer each and every post. Now, if you didn't recognize and you can't relate to what I'm saying, then maybe there's somebody in your life that is experiencing this and you're just wondering what's going on? Why are they talking to me? Why are they avoiding me? Why won't they answer my calls? Why don't they ever come out anymore? They're just, you know, they're no fun anymore. If there's someone in your life that's going through this, the last thing, the last thing I want you to do is ask what's wrong with you? And the reason for that is most of the time we can't tell you. We might not even know ourselves. So what I want you to do instead, I want you to ask, how are you feeling? How are you feeling today? What's going on with you inside? How are you feeling? And I want you to really listen to the answer because you never know how you can help. And the other thing I don't want you to say is just get over it. Yeah, I know we're not the people that we're supposed to be. We're not the people that you want us to be. We're not who we want to be. But if we could just get over it, if it was that easy, we would have done it already. So please, ask us how we're feeling and ask how you can help. That's going to be a lot more beneficial. See, what you have to understand is that everybody gets the blues, and that's okay. Everybody gets the blues. You know, we get sad. We grieve, you know. We suffer a loss or a disappointment or a heartbreak, and that's okay, but the difference between blue and black is that blue is sad and black is despairing. Blue is disappointed and black is hopeless. But most importantly, blue is, blue is temporary and black has a very, very high risk of being permanent. Depression lies. It lies and it lies and it lies and it lies so well and so often that it starts to sound like the truth. And the longer depression lies to you, it becomes your truth. The first thing it lies about is your pain. Pain is a persistent anxiety, insecurity, and need. Picture yourself on a roller coaster. I hate roller coasters myself. But picture yourself at the roller coaster and it's, you're up at the very top and it's so steep. I mean, it's a huge drop. And you get that flutter in your belly and you get that tension in your shoulders and your heart is racing and your stomach feels like it's just gonna drop out of your body. Now imagine that that roller coaster doesn't end. Imagine that that feeling just keeps going and going and going. And that's how depression lies to you. The other thing depression lies about is fear. You know, you get these thoughts in your head and they just swirl around like a tornado and they just spiral and they take you deeper and deeper and deeper into I'm stupid and I'm ugly and I'm worthless and I don't matter and nobody loves me. That's how depression lies to you. When there are displacements in your foundation it creates a series of waves and those waves build and they get bigger and they grow 20, 40, 80, 100 feet until it is just this wall of unrelenting water and that wall is just racing towards you and it's going to crush everything in its path. See everybody experiences depression differently and mine it feels like a tsunami. I can see the storm clouds on the horizon and I can feel the pressure changing and I feel it coming towards me and then it just knocks my ass out. And when you get to that place, when you are so deep in the darkness 
that you've forgotten that there is a light for you to see. That's when depression wins. The first time, and I want you to understand something. I want you to know something. I have never, ever, not once said that I want to die. I've never said that. What I want is for the pain to stop. I just want the pain to stop. So the first time I tried to stop it, I used painkillers. But the thing about oxycodone and metaxalone is that if you mix those two things together, they become real killers, not just painkillers. And you end up in the hospital, emergency room, on your brother's birthday. But I had a bad day. And that bad day is translated into actually some really horrible, horrible days and weeks and months. And the second time I had a bad day was actually a year of bad days. So I set the world record for drinking two bottles of Chardonnay. And the next thing I remember was the paramedics. I don't remember drinking it. I don't remember the cord I tied around my arm. I don't remember the knife in my hand. I just remember going someplace where I could get help and trying to explain that I didn't want to die. I just wanted the pain to stop. In the case of a tsunami, the U.S. Geological Survey recommends finding something that floats, something that you can hold on to, something that you could use as a raft. I haven't said this before because we don't talk about it, but I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to my baby brother Dave for being my raft, for saving my life more than twice, and for being somebody that I can hold on to. Thank you. Thank you. If you don't take anything that I say in this presentation away today, I want you to take this one thing. I want you to take hope. Hope stands for hold on, pain ends. If you're out there and you're watching, I want you to put this into the Facebook feed for me. I want you to put hashtag hope. If you know what I'm talking about, if you've been where I've been, if you're right there now, if you're still here, I want you to hold on. Pain ends. I promise. I promise. And it doesn't have to end with your death. It can end in so many other ways with you still being here. So my gift for you is a free ebook about depression that's going to help you identify the symptoms and find out some ways to get help. And the way that you're going to get that is to go to Still Here 2014. That's Still Here 2014.com. That ebook is available to you as an instant download. If you don't get it for yourself, get it to share with someone else. The reason I am standing here right now, still here, strong and confident and powerful, is because I made a choice. We don't have a choice about getting depression. We don't have a choice about our experience of it. But we do have a choice to recognize what's going on with us. We can choose to recognize the symptoms. We can choose to acknowledge that we might need some help. We can choose to take some steps forward. And I chose to live my best life ever. That's why I'm still here. And I want to share with you five things that you can do to make a choice in your own life or to help someone that you love make a choice in theirs. The 16th of March 2012 is the day that I turned my life around, literally turned it around 180 degrees because I had another bad day otherwise known as a month of bad days, two months of bad days. And I wasn't getting out of bed that day. I was going to try for the third time, because the third time you get lucky. But I got lucky in a way I didn't expect. I chose to answer the phone that day. I chose to get out of bed. 
I chose to take a step out of the house. I chose to go and meet a friend who then ministered to me for the next five hours. And at the end of those five hours, she said, what if? What if you get out of your own way? What if you stop pretending to be strong and lean on the people in your life who are, who will hold you up until you can be strong yourself? What if? So here are the things that she asked me to do. Number one, she asked me to make an angel list. Just like that movie, it is a wonderful life and there are people who are gonna miss you. There are people that you can count on. Make a list. There are people who have your back, people who will hold your hand, people who will hold you up. Make a list. And then ask. Swallow your pride of what they're gonna think about you. Swallow your fear of what they're gonna say about you and ask for what you need. Be grateful. Gratitude is gonna save you, I promise. You might not think it, you might think that you have nothing to be grateful for, but trust me, even the tiniest thing. And I don't mean the negative things like I'm grateful I didn't stub my toe. I mean be grateful for that little tiny plant that's in the crack in the sidewalk. Be grateful for the fact that you can hear that bird singing. Be grateful, I promise, it's gonna make a difference. And this one is important. This one is key. You have to forgive yourself. You did things. I did things. I didn't do things. I said things. I felt things. I thought things. Let it go. Let it go and forgive yourself because that is the only way that you're going to be able to move forward into healing. And most importantly, find a why. Find a purpose, a mission, something beyond yourself. You're my why. Everybody out here watching right now, you're my why. Because I want you to know that you're not alone and you never have to be alone again. I want you to know that you are the hero of your own story. A hero is a person who is admired for their courage. And courage is the willful choice to accept the challenge regardless of circumstances. So with that in mind, I want you to fasten your seatbelt. You know, my favorite time to fly is actually in bad weather. And the reason for that is I love it when you take off in the rain and the lightning and the storms and you get above those clouds and suddenly everything just clears out. So what's above your rain? That's my question. What's above your rain? What's possible for you? What's possible for someone you care about? What's possible for the people in your life? What are you going to be able to accomplish? What are you going to be able to do? How are you going to be able to change your life because you're still here? And once you've seen above your rain, I want you to see beyond. I want you to see beyond yourself to the other people around you, even the ones that you don't know. I want you to see how that you can make a difference, how you can make a choice to help somebody else make a change. Mm. I told you before that hope stands for hold on, pain ends, but there's also something else it stands for. It stands for help other people evolve. If you're watching me, if you're listening, put it in the feed, hashtag hope help other people evolve. You see, the scars that we try hardest to hide, and I've been hiding these for a very long time, but the scars that I've been hiding might be the ones that you need to see most. Mm. And Sorry. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting requests from the audience. The scars that I have been trying to hide, the scars that you are hiding, the scars that you're ashamed of, the scars that you don't want anybody to know about might very well be the scars that somebody else needs to see most. So give hope, help other people evolve. And one of the ways that you can do that is with my latest project. It's called hashtag still here. Success stories of suicide failures, because yeah, I'm admitting that I'm a failure, and I'm hoping that my failure and my still being here is going to help you or someone you love be a success in their own life. Depression lies. This is an opportunity for you to rewrite your story. Everybody has a story. 
You think you don't. You think it doesn't matter. But I'm telling you, your story does matter. I'm waiting to hear it. Somebody out in the world is waiting to hear it. They need to hear it. You need to share it. Rewrite your story. Hashtag still here is a multi-author hardcover and ebook project. It's a collection of personal essays about what we are able to leave behind because we decided to stay, because we're still here. I'm looking for both experienced writers and novice storytellers. Everybody has a story and your story matters. You can write your own or you can let our ghost writers do it for you. There's writing coaches available and also professional ghost writers and editors. There's also going to be a dedicated website with support and resources. I want to create an online community that understands what you're going through and is going to encourage you in your healing. There's an interview process and there's a shared investment, but more importantly than anything else, there's a legacy. There's an opportunity to live your best life and help someone else do theirs. If you're interested in being part of this project, if you're willing to take my hand and walk through this journey so that we can reach out to others, then please text still here to 224-404-2738. Still here to 224-404-2738. There are billions of people on this planet. And all too often we feel insignificant. But there's power in one. There's power in the one. And there's power in one because all it takes sometimes is one person with one message. And maybe even it's one sentence. But my hope in creating this hashtag still here project is that we can save one life. I hope it's yours. I hope it's somebody you love. If you're out there on Facebook and you believe in what I'm trying to do, then type hashtag power of one into the feed. My name is Mia Zachary. Through the grace of God and the love of family and the support of friends, I'm still here in 2014. You can find me on Facebook at Mia Zachary. You can reach me via email, Mia at creativitycubed.com, M-I-A at symbol, C-R-E-8, I-V-I-T-Y-3 dot com. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hold your hand. And I'd love for you to tell me that you're still here in 2015 and 16 and 17. Start today. Live your best life. I'm so glad you're still here. Thank you.